All right, people, I'm Chris. You're watching Fragmental. Top 10 fragrances from Parfums Vintage. Let's do it. Hi everyone, hope you're all doing really well. Before we get started, can we just talk about my quarantine cut? So my wife and kids got let loose with the clippers, they swore that they didn't slip, but I'm not convinced, it's, uh, it's pretty short. What do you think? Is it too short? I quite like it, yeah. I'm pretty happy with that for a quarantine cut. Anyway, today I'm talking about the house of Parfums Vintage. So they are essentially a dupe house, a clone house, whatever you want to call it. They produce inspired versions of very popular fragrances, usually niche fragrances but what this brand do is they often tweak the formula add a little twist offer us a different take a different angle on very well-known fragrance dna's and a lot of people enjoy the house for that reason now if you're that guy that keyboard warrior you're about to type me a message about how can i support a clone house a dupe brand step away from the keyboard okay just chill out look i just want to say not everyone agrees with clone houses, that's fine. But on my channel, I'm providing content for everyone. So some people really enjoy houses like this, some don't. If it's not a video that's for you, all you have to do is move along to the next video. Click on the Mr. Beast recommendation below this video and you might have a better time. But let's be honest, cloning happens all the time and I'm not talking about clone houses, I'm talking about within big luxury niche brands. They're copying DNAs, they're being inspired by compositions. It's happening all the time. How many versions of Tuscan Leather are there or Baccarat Rouge 540? And these luxury niche brands are not being transparent. They're not saying, yes, we've been inspired by this fragrance, at least with these clone houses they're being transparent and they're being upfront about which fragrances they've been inspired by so that's food for thought one company that just springs to mind very popular company creed they've got at least three fragrances i can just think of off the top of my head two of them have the name original as part of their name so if you're not quite sure what's going on there then maybe just do a bit of digging do a bit of research you might be surprised all right if you're still with me let's start talking about parfums vintage i do want to say that my choices in this video have been made from over 40 parfums vintage fragrances that i own i know they have a lot more than that i haven't smelled them all i'm not going to stand here and tell you i'm an expert on the house but this video is purely based on my experience with the house i think i have smelled quite a lot of them so i thought this video might be useful for anyone who's thinking of exploring the house but there's so many options there's so many choices so maybe the 10 i'm going to talk about in in this video might just give you a bit of a starting point to start delving into the house maybe trying a few samples out so um, if it's of use then that's great Obviously, these are 10 that I really enjoy. Everyone has different opinions, so if mine are different to yours, you know, let's just respect each other's opinions. But these are 10 fragrances from Parfums Vintage that I really enjoy. Let's go. Okay, so kicking off the list. Firstly, George, I'm sorry. Not only am I doing a Parfums Vintage video, but I'm gonna talk about your favorite fragrance. So this one is based on Creed's Millicene Imperial. It's Rush of Unicorns. So this one's a little bit sweet, a little bit salty, a little bit fruity. It's got a melon accord in there. It's a great composition. It's smoothed out with some ambergris. It's classy, it's sophisticated. I do have to say it's not my favorite Creed fragrance, although I do really enjoy it. It's not that I don't like it at all. A problem that a lot of people have, which is an issue that I've had with this fragrance when I've sampled it, is its lasting power. So it's quite weak in its performance. For me, it doesn't project that well. It doesn't last. I mean, for a few hours, for three to four hours, I do really enjoy it. If you're one of the people who would prefer better performance out of this DNA, then Parfums Vintage have tackled that. You could argue that by making a longer lasting fragrance with more projection, better longevity, that you lose some of that class, some of that lightness of touch, some of that elegance of the original. And I do think that is the case. If you love the original, then maybe you just want to stick with that if you're happy with, um, with the performance of that. And a fragrance doesn't always have to have a big performance. Sometimes if you try to extend the performance or, or beef up the performance, you would lose what is so special about a DNA. You would lose that, that elegance and you would lose that that structure so I don't always think that a fragrance does have to be massive in its performance 
but when you're talking Creed prices I can really understand why some people do want um, to have better performance so perhaps this one might be for you so it really recreates that core that core DNA in the air it is unmistakably based on Creed's Millicene Imperial but it's thicker, it's richer, it's denser, it's longer lasting. As I say, perhaps you do lose a little bit of that class, a little bit of that elegance, but what you lose in that, you gain in performance, which would be more to some people's liking. So, uh, the original Creed, Millicene Imperial, whilst I enjoy it, it's not one of my favorite Creeds, but because this improves the performance and it's longer lasting, for me, it's probably a better option. Might be for you too. All right, on to the next one. This one is called Pissant, although I prefer to pronounce it Puissant. This one is based on a fragrance from the house of Ramon Monegal. It's called La Isla Blanca, which is the island of Ibiza. So this scent DNA is inspired by Ibiza, so you get what you might expect, a lovely summery feel. It's a fruity, musky fragrance. It's got a slightly tropical fruit kind of vibe to it. I maybe get a bit of kind of peachiness or, or mango, something like that. None of that type of fruit is, uh, is listed. There is white jasmine, so perhaps it's that slightly kind of sweet, indolic thing that is um, creating this slightly tropical vibe. It's sweet, a little bit soft, Salty, it's very summery. Parfums Vintage actually described this as smelling like summer days and cocktails. I think that's a perfect summing up of this fragrance DNA. It's got loads of pop, it's uplifting, it's bright. Uh, really happy fragrance. I really enjoy this one, particularly in the summer. Puissant. My next recommendation from the house is based on Gucci's Pour Homme 2, which some say is discontinued, but it's still quite readily available. Anyway, this is a beautiful fragrance. It's called Imbue. If you've yet to smell Gucci Pour Homme 2, you're in for a treat. It's an absolute beautiful fragrance. So this reminds me a little bit of like a, a lightly spiced chai latte. At the heart of this fragrance, there's a beautiful tea note, like a black tea, but it's combined with, with the sweetness and spiciness of cinnamon. So it's got a beautiful heart to the fragrance. But then in the base, we've got some tobacco leaf and some myrrh, so it's got a nice kind of strong structure to the base of this fragrance, really anchoring everything in. The tea note, I would say in here, is very calming, so it's kind of calming and relaxing, but it's got a good backbone to it as well. It's a classy, masculine fragrance. This is for the man who has an assured confidence. This is just incredibly versatile. You can wear this for any occasion, all year round. It would be an amazing signature scent. Imbue, I think, is a really beautiful fragrance. If you don't own the original, if you're struggling to find it, if you can't get hold of it, then you could look at this. But I would say the price of this won't be that much different to what I've seen prices of Gucci Pour Homme 2 for online so whether you want the original or this one i don't know if you're struggling to get the original then this would be a great option all i know imbue is a beautiful fragrance dna and it's a recommendation if you're looking for a fragrance that's got some intensity to it that is summery and comes in a bottle you might want to try summer bottled intense when you first spray this one it almost fizzes with energy. It's got one of the best opening pops to a fragrance that I've ever experienced. So bright and invigorating and uplifting for in the summer. It's got an intensity to it, I, I guess you would say, but not in a dark way. It's a very bright intensity. And considering it's such a bright fragrance, it's not all that citrusy. There is citrus in here, but it's not a very citrusy, kind of lemony opening to the fragrance at all. And considering how bright it is, it's got a thickness, it's got a weight to it, it's got a density, which is really nice. It's got this lovely kind of clean note to it. It's got juniper berries and a gin accord in here. So it reminds you a little bit of a gin and tonic. So it's got this lovely clean cleanness but it's balanced with like a thick sweetness as well so this cleanness and this thick sweetness kind of layered together just I think is what is so magical about this fragrance there's some tonka bean there's some musk adding some weight to the base which is uh, providing this this density it's anchoring everything down really well it's bright it's clean it's rich it's massively refreshing summer bottled intense is a great option if you want a nice bright summer fragrance that isn't too aquatic and isn't too citrusy good stuff 
From an amazing summer fragrance to another amazing summer fragrance, this is based on Creed's Virgin Island Water. It's called Isla Tropical Privé. This one nails that Virgin Island Water DNA perfectly. It really gets to the core of that fragrance. Parfums Vintage do have another version of this called Isla Tropical. So the Privé version is kind of a more intense version, I guess. I think it's got more coconut, more lime, so it's slightly thicker and slightly more powerful. The Isla Tropical is a little bit closer to the original Creed's Virgin Island Water. This one is very bright, invigorating, refreshing. I'd say it's more diffusive, so I think it projects further in the first couple of hours than you get with Creed's Virgin Island Water, which is um, a fairly light fragrance. It's a beautiful fragrance but I don't think it has um, a wide uh, projection so this one definitely uh, has has it beaten in performance and you smell this DNA if you've not smelled um, Virgin Island water it smells of limes it smells of coconuts like um, a tropical cocktail it's the kind of scent DNA that makes you want to go and sit on a white sandy beach under a palm tree and drink a cocktail. It's a very kind of bright, relaxing, easygoing fragrance. I find it to be longer lasting than Virgin Island Water. What it loses in subtle elegance from the original, it gains in its performance and longevity. So if you like Virgin Island Water, but off your skin, you find the performance is maybe a little bit lacking for the prices you'll pay for Creed, then Isla Tropical Privé might be worth checking out. The next one is based on the discontinued Coromandel EDT from Chanel. It's called Cacophony. You can still buy Coromandel from Chanel, but only in its EDP concentration. And quite a lot of people feel that the EDP concentration isn't quite what the EDT was. I think people felt that the EDT was uh, a little more um, effervescent, a little more lively, had just a bit more going on, a little bit more interest. Well, this apparently recreates that. I can't say that I ever smelled Coromandel EDT, but I find this to be an absolutely beautiful scent. It is very patchouli heavy. If you don't like patchouli, maybe this one isn't for you, but this is one of the most beautiful renditions of patchouli that I've ever smelled. It's got a real timeless quality to it. It's rich, it's got bitter orange and incense and an accord of kind of decadent white chocolate in here. So it's just a beautiful smelling fragrance. When I smell this, and this might just be me, it makes me think of when I was a kid and it's a warm autumn day, you're carefree, happy-go-lucky, and you're walking down the street and there's all the leaves on the pavement and you just walk down kicking all the leaves and be flying up in your face. And that kind of warm, comforting smell of the dried, slightly earthy leaves makes me think of that. I'm not saying this smells exactly like leaves, but it gives me that memory. I'm sure you'll have your own memory, but that's the one that uh, comes to mind for me. And I think that's one of the reasons why I enjoy this one so much is that it just conjures such kind of warm, happy memories for me. This is really classy stuff. It showcases patchouli beautifully. If you like patchouli, then I'm sure you would really enjoy Cacophony. So there's a little known fragrance. You've probably not heard of it. It's from the House of Creed. It's gonna be really popular. It's gonna catch on one day. People are gonna go crazy for this stuff. Let me tell you, okay? I'm ahead of the game on this one. This is gonna be big. Anyway, Parfums Vintage offer, I think, 14 different iterations of the Aventus DNA. So where do you start? I didn't want to include more than one in this list because I wanted to leave room for lots of other fragrances. I do intend to do a separate video on probably the top five Parfums Vintage Aventus inspired fragrances. So if you're looking at the Aventus uh, copies or inspirations, then uh, hopefully I can get that video out uh, further down the line and that will be of some use to you. So for this one, it came down to two fragrances and there was hardly anything in it. I almost, almost went for Vanilla Intense. In fact, I picked it. It was gonna be in the list and then I changed my mind. Vanilla Intense just boosts the vanilla note from the Aventus DNA, so you just get it a little more creamy, a little sweeter, but only subtly so, not in a gourmand way. You wouldn't smell it and think, wow, this is kind of overbearing vanilla fragrance. It's just a hint of vanilla, which is a little more than you get in the original. So no, I didn't pick Vanilla Intense for this. Rest assured, that is a great one. For this video, I've chosen Emperor Extrait. Thank you. 
The reason I chose Emperor X-Straight was I felt like it was the most balanced version of the Aventus DNA. I felt like it had enough of the woodiness, but not too smoky, and then enough of the fruity citrus, so the bergamot and the pineapple. The, the fruity pop on this one is just so remarkably well done. It just, in terms of that fruitiness in the opening, I think this is the best one that Parfums Vintage do. And like I say, I feel like it is really well balanced. In my humble opinion, I think Emperor x rate is one of the best versions of the Aventus DNA that you can buy, hands down. Performance is stellar, it lasts and lasts. Now I know that there are other versions of Emperor, I haven't smelled those, so please let me know in the comments down below if you have experience with those. How do you think they compare with Emperor x -Trait? Are they as balanced as this? You know, the reason I love this one is, as I've said, I think it is a beautifully balanced version of this DNA, so I'd be very interested to know what the other Emperors smell like. I find this much stronger than my 2016 Aventus, which is a pretty good batch. So if it is stronger than my 2016 Aventus, I'm pretty sure that this will be quite a bit stronger than the current version of Aventus that you can buy which I feel like has a bit of a bad reputation. I just keep hearing people saying it's been reformulated, it's just a shadow of its former self. I haven't smelled the current 2020 version. If you've got experience of that, please do let me know, but I do hear that it's not as good as, um, as earlier batches. So if you want probably the best uh, version of that DNA, then take a look at Emperor x -Trait. What I would recommend though is because there are so many different versions, go to Parfums Vintage and maybe sample all their Aventus inspired options and just see which one works for you. You may prefer the added creaminess and the sweetness of the vanilla. Like I said, so close between Vanilla Intense and this one. So maybe sample all they have to offer and make your own mind up. But I'm sure amongst all their versions of the Aventus DNA, you will find one that really works for you. The next one is based on a pretty amazing Tom Ford fragrance called Amber Absolute. This one is called Sandal Amber. I think Amber Absolute is one of the best amber fragrances on the market. It's not just that beautiful smooth amber, it's got strength, it's got backbone, it's really potent. It is one of the most rich and velvety fragrance DNAs I've ever got my nose on. This is the same, it recreates perhaps not the current version of Amber Absolute, although I haven't smelled that, but the original one that was discontinued for a while, this apparently is closest to the original Amber Absolute DNA. We've got amber, vanilla, incense, resins, and they're just all working so well together. It's very strong, but very smooth. This is serious stuff, no messing around. I think it's probably suited better to cooler temperatures, so autumn or winter, this is just gonna be a fantastic amber fragrance. If you enjoy amber in fragrances, then I'm pretty certain you will love Sandal Amber. I mean, just look at the color of that. If you've not yet really discovered amber fragrances, if you've not started looking into them, then this would be a good place to start because as I say, I think it is probably one of the best ambers that you can get. If you love amber and you've not got Amber Absolute or Sandal Amber, I can highly recommend this one. The next one is inspired by Baccarat Rouge 540, and I think this one came out just before Baccarat Rouge started to become probably one of the most cloned fragrances on the planet. It's Sunset in Heaven. What can I say? This is just a beautiful rendition of the Baccarat Rouge 540 DNA. I would say of all the ones I've smelled, this is probably the closest. I just feel the quality of this one is much higher than what you would find in a lot of uh, inspired fragrances. It's kind of like a fluffy ball of cotton wool. It's just something really comforting and easy to wear about this fragrance, but at the same time, it manages to be a very striking and iconic fragrance. I think it's a very modern um, type of DNA. It's like a modern trend, but I think it will become timeless. I think it's gonna be one of those DNAs that will never date and will always be in fashion. It's like sweet cotton candy, but with a woody backbone. And then in the base of this, there's some fur resin, which gives it a great little kick, a really nice little bit of attitude. This is an incredibly sexy scent. For males or females, it's absolutely unisex. This is stunning worn on its own, or have hours of fun experimenting, layering this with some of your favorite fragrances. And here we are, at the number one Parfums Vintage fragrance, in my opinion. And 
what box doesn't this one tick? It sparkles, it pops, it projects, it's got great performance, it's versatile, it's based on Roger Dove's Elysium, it's Evolution de l'Homme Matin. Elysium is probably one of the best woody citrus fragrances in the world. I think it's pretty tough to beat. This one replaces the vetiver note with patchouli, and I think that helps to boost the fragrance. I think it makes it a stronger fragrance. This is insanely mass appealing. It's probably going to get you compliments whenever I've worn this. It's always grabbed people's attention. It's very pleasing to wear, and it projects massively, so people around you are going to smell it. And it's a lovely, bright, very mass appealing smell, so people are going to really enjoy this one off you. In terms of how it compares to Elysium, Elysium is just so masterfully blended. It's so elegantly put together, it can't be beaten. Elysium is Elysium. But if you want a fragrance that perhaps trades on that subtle elegance and gives you uh, more of a beast mode performance, if you want to fill a room when you walk in, if you want people to notice you, if you want to get compliments, you maybe uh, might want to look at this one. As I say, you can't beat the original, but this is a very, very good version. If you want something stronger than Elysium, then Evolution de l'Homme Matan will have your back. Just wow. Okay, so there we go. All 10 fragrances done. We did it. I'm exhausted because for some reason the camera didn't record for the first half of this video. Nothing to do with me not pressing record at all. Okay, maybe it was to do with me not pressing record, but you know, these things happen. But we did it, we got through it, and I think what I had to redo, I did even better. So there you go, you got a better video, but yeah, I'm absolutely <laughs> exhausted now. So I'm gonna go, let me know what you think of my choices. Uh, let me know what experience you have with Parfums Vintage. Are you into the house? I know they got a lot of talk, I know a lot of people that are really into fragrances, a lot of frag heads really um, think the quality of Parfums Vintage is great. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. Let me know what your top three from the house are, and ones that I've perhaps not mentioned in this video, recommend to me, because if I've not tried them, hopefully um, I'll be able to sample those fragrances. All right, so there we go. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it useful. Thank you very much for watching. Remember, keep tuning into FM and keep smelling good.